So I just bought the cheapest Dodge Challenger Hellcat widebody in the entire United States. Okay, so obviously those of you that have been following my channel know that this is not a new vehicle to me. I've had this on the channel for over the last three years. And so what could I possibly mean by the fact of I just bought the cheapest Hellcat, especially given the fact that I already have the license plate for it? Well, you guys caught me. Of course, I didn't actually just buy this car, but I kind of technically did. So if you guys have been following the channel for a very long period of time, you'll know that I actually leased this vehicle brand new back in 2020. I made a full delivery or pickup video back in the day where I fly out to Denver, Colorado, and I actually pick up this vehicle and drive it about 500 plus miles miles home back to my home state here in Utah. And if you guys are interested in that video, I'm gonna throw it up on the screen. But obviously a lease is only a short period of time. It was actually a three year lease. So just recently I went ahead and bought out my lease and financed this vehicle. And so technically I bought this vehicle used from Chrysler Capital, which was the company that was owning my lease and I was simply just making payments to them. So that is what I mean by buying the cheapest Dodge Challenger Hellcat wide body. And we'll talk about all the prices here in just a minute, but I briefly wanna show off the exterior interior of this vehicle for those of you that are new to the channel and haven't seen this vehicle before or maybe haven't seen all of the in-depth things about this vehicle so let's do a quick exterior interior and then we'll talk about the pricing all right so starting off with the exterior now i did talk about the exact spec trim and all of the details about this particular vehicle when i bought it three years ago and i'll link up that video on the screen if you guys are interested but this will be just a quick summary so this is obviously a dodge challenger hellcat wide body i really like the wide body look to it before this had a Dodge Challenger Scat Pack, which I really loved. And even to this day, it kind of has a soft spot in my heart. But uh, this is the Hell Raisin color. And the reason I flew out to Colorado was really because of this color. Uh, and of course, the deal that I got back then as well. But uh, I love the Hell Raisin. I love the plum crazy purple. I wanted something really colorful. And we just didn't really have it here in Utah. And so I had to look outside of the state. But I really haven't done too much to it. Now, one thing I did do was add a little bit of lights over here inside of the grill and uh, over here near the intercooler as well. And I actually ended up unplugging them because they occasionally just turn on uh, when I park the vehicle for a very long period of time and then turn it back on again. So I think there's a little bit of a glitch there, but <laughs> I took apart the entire front bumper to actually install these lights. So I made an entire video about how I disassembled the front bumper, added those lights, put it back together. And you really can't tell that I took it apart. I think I did a pretty decent job if I say so myself, but, um, I really don't use these lights very often. So it was kind of a pointless uh, amount of effort, but it is still pretty cool, especially because I can regulate the different colors using my phone. Now, coming across the side of the vehicle, really haven't done much to it um, aside from underneath the vehicle, pretty much right underneath the driver and passenger seat. Of course, every single Challenger has two mufflers. Well, I ended up replacing it with Dynamax race bullets, which is actually exactly what I did on my Scat Pack as well. I think it sounds a little bit meaner, a little bit more growly, if that's the best way to describe it. Now coming across the rear end of the vehicle, also not much has been done aside from these little uh, mud flaps uh, on the front and the back. And the reason I did that is because these wide body wheels kick up a lot of rocks. And honestly, I noticed some scratches located over here on the door panel and over here on the rear fender as well. You can even see up here, there are some scratches that I can't get rid of and I'm gonna have to buff them out as best as I can. They've even added this paint protection film back here, but it's just not enough. So I added these little mud flaps or mud guards, however you call them, to try to protect against that and it's helped a little bit but it still isn't foolproof 100 percent plus i added these after about a thousand miles of driving so i was already getting some scratches at that point but in the back the only thing i really did was replace the dodge emblems with this little sticker over here and the main reason i did that is because even after driving this car for like 500 miles without ever opening this trunk i noticed some scratches on the black plastic and that is just common for every single dodge challenger and so i was getting tired of seeing that i decided to cover up with the vinyl but uh you know some people might like it so people don't. I like the yellow SRT badging back here because I like the yellow with the purple color, but to each their own. Uh, and then this does have the SRT performance spoiler. But other than that, I really haven't done much to the exterior of the vehicle and I really don't think it needs it. But next up, let's show off the interior and what this particular vehicle came with. Now, starting off with the interior, my particular vehicle came with the plus package, which a lot of Hellcats actually come with, but that adds some of the nicer materials you find over here on the door panel with this contrast stitching, the leather wrapped surfaces. That 
actually also includes this Alcantara insert on the door panel, some more leather touch surfaces where you're gonna rest your elbow. And then climbing inside, mine also has the Alcantara package, which added this Alcantara steering wheel, which I would say has worn pretty well over my last 10,000 or so miles driving it. It's not as nice as when it was brand new, but it doesn't look too bad either. So just keep that in mind. That's kind of the downside of having an Alcantara steering wheel is it just the oils in your hands tend to kind of ruin it, but I think it's pretty good overall. And the Alcantara package also adds these Alcantara inserts on the seats as well. This being the plus package has heated and ventilated seats. They're of course power operated. And then I do like that Hellcat logo over here at the top of the seat as well. And then the plus package also adds nicer materials all throughout the dash. So you can see it's all leather wrapped over onto the passenger side as well. You've also got leather wrapped surfaces around the air vents. And then your air vent over there has SRT badging as well. That looks pretty cool. But you know, inside is pretty nice, very similar to other Dodge Challengers, but it does feel a little bit more premium because of that plus package and the Alcantara package as well. Now climbing inside, very familiar place. You of course have red gauges here. This one being the Hellcat, you got the red start stop button. You connect system with the 8.4 inch touchscreen. Uh, this one doesn't have any fancy carbon fiber package, which I honestly think is kind of pointless because this car is already so heavy as it is. I also don't have the suede on the headliner. That is a separate package. This one just has the typical cloth headliner as well. And then I do like the paddle shifters that they have on the steering wheel. They're a little bit different than my scat pack was. Then you've got your controls for your gauge cluster. You got your audio controls. Mine does not have adaptive cruise control, but it does have regular cruise control. And then mine also did not come with a sunroof either. So uh, that's not an option that was included on my particular vehicle. You got a sunglass holder, your home link system. And then down here, mine did come with the eight speed ZF automatic transmission, which is really nice. A little bit more of that same trim piece that you find on the inside of the vehicle. And then I've got a little bit more of that soft leather armrest with that white contrast stitching. But overall, a pretty nice interior. I definitely felt an improvement of the Hellcat interior versus my Scat Pack interior. In fact, I made a video comparing the two side by side a few years ago. If you guys are interested in that, I'm gonna link it up on the screen, but it does feel a little bit more luxurious, a little bit more premium than the Scat Pack. Even the door panel over there with that leather top surface does feel a little bit more premium than the injection molded plastic that you found on my Scat Pack. Now, mine also came with the driver convenience group, which includes H ID headlamps and blind spot monitoring. I think that's a must for a challenger because your blind spot is absolutely insane. So I think you have to get blind spot monitoring if you own a challenger. All right, now let's talk about the numbers. So out the door back in 2020, this vehicle MSRP'd at $78,560. Definitely not the most expensive Hellcat wide body out there because it really doesn't have a lot of the crazy features like a sunroof, like adaptive cruise control, like the Alcantara headliner. It was more basic, but that's exactly what I wanted. I just wanted that color, that Hellraisen exterior, and I got it. Now, of course, I didn't pay that full price. I did lease this vehicle for three years. I put a down payment on it, and then I also got some leasing incentives from the manufacturer that reduced the purchase price of this vehicle. And I made a video detailing all of this information in the past. That's not the purpose of today's video. Today's video, I just wanna tell you exactly how much I purchased this car out of its lease at the end of its term. Now, it's a pretty easy process. At the end of your term, which you can call up Chrysler Capital and find out exactly when that maturity date is, uh, you have a couple options. For one, you can give it back to the dealership and wipe your hands clean. Don't have to worry about the car again. The second option, is you sell it privately so I can go to a Dodge dealership or any other dealership and sell the vehicle, which is actually kind of how I sold my Toyota. I actually listed it for sale when its lease was about to expire and I actually had a Toyota dealership reach out to me and buy my car off from a different dealership. So they pretty much bought out a different dealership and paid more than I owed on it with the lease. So it's kind of an interesting situation, but that was during the pandemic. So I could always sell this car near the end of the lease and then pay off the lease amount. And the third option, which is what I ended up doing, was finance this car. I went to a bank or a credit union and applied for a loan and they gave me a loan to buy this car out, similar to how you would really any other car, any other used vehicle. You know, they do a quick check of the vehicle, the mileage, they figure out what it's worth and then they give you a loan for that amount. Now, the amount that I got the loan for was my payoff amount, which is what I got from Chrysler Capital. I reached out to them and said, how much do I owe to pay this car off? And that number, I have it right here in the payoff letter, was a staggering $45,551.66. And that, my friends, is exactly why I say I bought the cheapest wide body Hellcat in the United States, because there is probably nowhere else in the planet where you can find a clean title, wide body Challenger Hellcat with less than 10,000 miles 
for $45,000 or $46,000. I mean, it's really insane. And, you know, to be honest, I just got really lucky. Uh, and I also just found a really good deal back in the day. I mean, a leasing is a good option for certain situations and it's not the best option for others. And if you guys want me to talk about that in a future video, I'm happy to do so. I've discussed it in the past, but it might be nice to do a refresher. So if you guys want to know the differences between leasing and buying, let me know down in the comments below and I'd be happy to make a video about it. But I kind of came in at the right time. I leased this Hellcat before prices started getting insane. I got an incredible lease where my interest rate was less than 1%. I think it was actually less than half a percent. And then at the end of the term, since I knew I wasn't going to drive this car a lot, my vehicle is worth quite a bit, but I don't necessarily really owe nearly as much as it's worth. And so I could technically go and sell it and put some money in my pocket, or I could keep it and keep the monthly payment a little bit lower than if I had financed this car from the very beginning. Uh, it was just a really good situation. And also the fact that prices for these cars kept pretty stable over the last three years. They increased a lot in 2022, and then they've started to come down again. I talked about this in last week's video. That's definitely helped the situation to keep the market value really high for this car. But nonetheless, I mean, even without the huge bubble that happened in 2022 and early 2023, $45,000 for a wide body Hellcat is still an insane deal. And I'm really happy with it. Now, the reason I've wanted to give you guys this update is I've had a lot of you subscribers ask me, what are my plans for this car at the end of the lease? Especially after I did some of those modifications with the exhaust system, you know, how is that going to deal with when I want to give the car back? Well, my plan was never to actually just hand it back to the dealership because I figured I'd have a little bit of value left in the car where I could either sell it to some other dealership or some individual out there and put some money back in my pocket and pay off the loan. So I never planned to give it back to the dealership. That's why I was totally fine doing some of these small modifications. And then to answer my subscriber questions, well, obviously I'm planning on keeping the vehicle. And there's actually three reasons why I'm deciding to keep this car for now. The first reason is because you all love seeing the Hellcat on the channel. I mean, my channel is built up on Dodge Challenger, Scat Pack, and Hellcat videos. And I think all of you really enjoy watching this car on the channel. You like the purple color, you like the topics regarding the vehicle, and it's just a very popular vehicle right now. And I don't wanna take that away from all you subscribers out there that are watching my channel specifically for this car. The second reason is because I really don't know what's coming next from Dodge. You know, honestly, I thought three years ago there would be a better idea at this point as to what's coming next. I mean, they've really just announced that Dodge Charger Daytona concept, but at the end of the day, that is just a concept. We don't really know what's coming in terms of the internal combustion engines, if there are any, which it seems more likely than not that they're going to put in some internal combustion engine. It's likely not going to be a V8. In fact, probably 99.9% .9 sure it's not a V8. But based on some of the molds that people have caught photos of, it looks like there is a transmission tunnel in the next generation Challenger or Charger or Banshee or whatever they choose to call it. And so there probably is going to be a gas engine. We just don't know what it is. And I don't even really know what the design is going to look like. Like there's a sheet metal design somewhere out there, but it's not really a completed product. And so, you know, I don't know what's coming next and I would hate it to sell this vehicle and then regret selling it because what's coming in the future may not be as good as a Hellcat. And then if I did sell this vehicle and find out the Dodge really isn't making anything cool or maybe what they're introducing is going to be extremely expensive and just out of reach for the majority of people, I would not be able to find another Hellcat wide body in the hell raisin color with less than 10,000 miles within the same price range that I purchased this vehicle from Chrysler Capital. I mean, that just wouldn't occur. A $45,000 wide body would probably have quite a few problems with it or maybe have a rebuilt title. It wouldn't be a clean title vehicle. And that's the second reason why I decided to purchase this vehicle and instead of sell it, buy something else, and then wait for Dodge to introduce something new. Because we don't even know what that's going to be, and we don't even know if it's going to be good. And the third and last reason is because I really do still enjoy this vehicle. I mean, I'm fortunate enough that on my channel I've driven around with a lot of different vehicles, and there are some that I really like, but there's not really any that I would necessarily sell this vehicle for. And even though I may not enjoy it as much as I did the very first day I picked it up, because a lot of the stuff you get used to, you know, you get used to the power, you get used to the sound, and so it's maybe not as enjoyable as 
day one, it still really is a very enjoyable car. And I especially love taking this car to car shows because the attention this car still gets after being out for you know eight years and this engine being in like 100,000 different vehicles, people still love the attention this car gets. I mean, I can throw up some footage right now of when I was leaving the Idaho Sun Valley Car Show where I was parked next to a Lamborghini Huracan and this thing was getting as much, if not more attention than this bright blue Lamborghini. I mean, it's truly insane how much attention this car gets, and I love it. I don't love getting attention myself, but I love when my car gets attention. It just makes me feel like I'm driving something cool. And, uh, you know, I still really enjoy that. I love that part of it. And so for now, those are the three reasons why I decided to keep this vehicle. Now, that said, there are a lot of cool cars out there that I would love to drive. I love the C8 Corvette. I've driven around in that vehicle quite a few times, and it's a very enjoyable car to drive. It feels like a supercar. But I know that if I sell this one for that, I'm not going to be able to get this one again. And this may be the last of the great American muscle cars that I am fortunate enough to own in this period of time. I mean, they're going to have C8 Corvettes for the next foreseeable future. Same with a lot of these other cars out there. But this car... This is ending as of 2023, and we really don't know what's happening next. So at least in the short to medium term, I'm planning on keeping this vehicle because there's really nothing else like it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I just wanted to give you an update as to what's been going on with the Hellcat, how much I paid for it to buy it out of the lease, and what the plan is for this vehicle for the next short term. If you guys have any questions about the entire process, leasing, buying, etc., Please leave your questions down in the comments below and I'll do my best to address them in a future video. If you guys enjoyed today's video, hit that like button. And also, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date on all of the weekly car videos. Everything from car reviews to Hellcat and Bronco content and everything in between. Also, check me out on all the social media at Schwazy underscore. Until next time, everybody, I hope you stay Schwazy, stay healthy, have a wonderful day.